welcome, welcome to The Bridge on Sunday mornings, March 22nd. We are so excited that you are here. Thank you for being here. I know that we are in a different uh, platform, we're on a different yeah. medium instead right. of being live. Right. Now we're online. Uh, but man, we are so excited that we still get to meet, even though we can't meet in public, we're able to still meet online. Yeah. And so, man, th thank goodness for technology yeah. and being able to uh, keep us together and connected. So uh, the platform we're using right here, it has a couple of things I just want to make you aware of um, as we begin service. So first thing is this, um, you can you can comment, live comments, everyone's watching. So even right now, go ahead and write a comment just to make sure it works. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, you guys look fantastic. Sean, are you losing weight? No, the quarantine is being <laughs> terrible. I'm gaining, <laughs> gaining weight by the moment. Uh, but go ahead and comment on there. You'll also see an option for live prayer. Yeah. And live prayer is cool because you can, um, you'll be able to have like a, like a private conversation. It won't go out on the public mm -hmm. board. Private conversation with me and my wife, and we would love to pray with you and your family. If you have someone sick, if you're in need, if you're distressed, if there's fear, anything at all, we would love, love, love to pray with you. And you'll also see on the top of the, of the menu bar or in the menu on the side, depending what platform you use, links to our website, YouTube page, um, place to give, mm -hmm. all that stuff is on there. And so uh, I really hope that you enjoy this kind of format. We'll be with it for a few more weeks. Yeah. Who knows how much longer. <laughs> Um, but we're just excited that we can still yeah. meet as a bridge family. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's our hope that this is, it still feels like family. Yeah. So use the comment section, use it, use it, use it. Um, and so we can all stay connected. Um, and we have some more announcements coming up of some ways that we're trying to stay connected as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the first part of service is we're going to, we're going to enter in to worship. And so babe, can you tell us what that will yeah. look like? So uh, we're going to enter into a time of worship, like Sean said. Um, and it's going to look a little bit different because we're not all together. Mm -hmm. We're not in the sanctuary, in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're not uh, in person. And so um, whatever it looks like, however you are watching uh, today, uh, however you are you are the bridge today, um, we encourage you to get comfortable, to worship God mm. as if you were in church. Yeah. Uh, raise your hands if you need to connect with God. Um, if you are by yourself, uh, sing out, you know, to the Lord um, like you've never sung out before. If with your, if with your, if you are with your family, sing out to the Lord mm. like never before. Yeah. Um, I, I, I am aware that this might be uh, the first time that you get to worship God in your living room or in your car mm. or wherever. Yeah. Take this opportunity as holy. Take this opportunity um, as something that uh, is 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 the first time for many other times to follow after mm. this. Uh, so I encourage you, engage in worship. The main, main, main focus, the main goal today is that you connect with God. Yeah that mm -hmm. you connect with God, that you know um, that you connected with the Heavenly Father, with the one uh, who created you, who loves you, who adores you, and doesn't matter if you are not in a cafeteria at Gilbert Elementary <laughs> School, uh, or in your living room, or in a car, or wherever you might be, um, He just wants to be with yeah. you. And so our hope is that you connect with Him today, this morning. Yeah, we love you guys so much. Let's give God this this next hour. Yeah. If your stuff going on, dishes and stuff, fam let's just pause for an yeah. hour. Let's give God this hour. Let's honor him in this hour. Yeah. Um, we do have stuff for kids. Mm -hmm. So if you head to our website um, or through, if you go to our Instagram, there's a link on there to take you to the Bridge Kids. Mm -hmm. It has the kids for um, all the way from nursery all the way up to youth. Um, to youth right? Mm -hmm. You guys are going to have something on the website yes. as well. Um, so. All of that will, it's not like um, live, so you can watch it whenever. You can put yeah. it on now, you can put it on afterward, you can do it tomorrow night, you can do it for recess tomorrow, whatever <laughs> you wanna do. Um, but yeah, there's something for the kids because we want everyone everyone to grow um, together. Yes. And so we love you guys. We're gonna go ahead and begin with some worship. Good morning, Bridge family. Welcome to church. I know it's not the conventional way of doing things, but God's doing some amazing things in our online ministry. So we invite you to worship with us this morning to give just all the glory to God, all the glory that he deserves. So please join us in worship. He is jealous for me. I'll be alone. 
for meeting us in this place we thank you for your holy spirit we ask lord god that you would continue to be with us as we worship you god be in our homes be in our cars wherever we are streaming this live lord god i pray that you would be in the midst we worship you jesus you are the
Pastor Sean, as he delivers the message from you to us, may it be nourishment to our, our hearts and our bodies and our minds and our spirits, God. May you rejuvenate us through the word that you have. May you bless this church. Continue to, to speak into us so that we may thrive even through the hard times, God. May the bridge thrive, Jesus. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you. We love you, church family. We love you, Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Hey, Bridge family. We still want to take time um, to receive our tithes and offering, to pray over our tithes and offering um, this morning. Uh, and I know the times that we're living in are crazy, and probably none of us has, has have ever like had to be quarantined or practice social distancing or anything like that before. Um, but we still believe that God is on the throne. We still believe that God is going to take care of every need. We still believe that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, uh, meaning that he owns it all. And whatever it is that we need, he can and will and wants to provide for us. Um, so I just want to pray uh, over our tithe and our offering this morning and encourage you um, not to be fearful in this time, but to trust God in this time. So Lord, we thank you. For being faithful. God, we thank you for being our provider. God, I even thank you for the special um, promise that you gave to, to tithers. God, that you promised that we would be able to sit under an open heaven. God, I thank you that we uh, would have no lack in this time. God, I thank you that you would provide every need according to your riches and your glory. Um, that are in Christ Jesus. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We bless the tithe. We bless the offering. Um, and we, we declare that it will be used to further the kingdom of God in Buena Park and around the world. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for who you are. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, hey, as those offering buckets are being passed around, just kidding. <laughs> They're not being passed around. Um, but I did want to say uh, you can give online at the bridge, uh, BP, the bridge BP .com. Um, You can give through our app. If you have our app, if you don't have our app, go ahead and download it and you can give through there as well. Um, if there, we're, we're going to probably, we're going to try to figure out a way, uh, for those of you who are still, um, on the check system, uh, writing out checks or giving cash, we will figure out a way, um, for you to still be able to do that, but we'll probably update you on that later, uh, at a later time. But for now, we, uh, our giving platform, um, is available and open, um, online at thebridgebp.com or on our app. Um, so the announcements that we have for today is we have something exciting that's coming up uh, that we have been uh, working on that Sean's been really diligent about. Uh, we want to announce uh, and launch this thing called Nick at Night. I mean, it's not called Nick at Night. <laughs> it's going to be called The Bridge at Night, but it's based off of Nick at Night. That's where we got the name from. Uh, but Nick at Night used to be this, you know, fun little thing that would that uh, was like a throwback at nighttime. So we kind of just did a little play on spin off of that where we're going to uh, have a um, marriage and family therapist um, just speak to us on a Zoom call and give us tips and, and, and uh, um 
tips and tricks and whatever practicals um, on how to not be stressed out during this crazy time, how to uh, be able to, to live with one another and not rip each other's heads off. Um, so we're gonna, we have that lined up. We have a personal trainer lined up because I don't know about you, but uh, this COVID-19 uh, has become more like a, a freshman 15 for me. Um, so I'm not excited about that. So I want to do something about it. We have a personal trainer that's going to talk nutrition, exercises, how we can stay healthy um, in times like this. Uh, we have a few other people line up uh, as far as education is concerned uh, with resources and all of that stuff. So that's exciting. We're going to do that via Zoom. Um, it's a it's an app where you can like have multiple people chat on it um, at once. So uh, we have that. Keep your ear out for that or your eyes open for that because <laughs> we'll communicate through Instagram, Facebook, um, and email. Uh, and with that being said, make sure you're connected uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, and uh, uh, email as well. And if you don't have, um, if, you, if you're not getting our emails, we have been sending emails regularly. Um, if you haven't been getting those emails, send us a DM, a direct message on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and or you can email us at info at the bridge bp.com and that way we can get your email address and get you uh, on our emailing list um, so that you're in the loop with everything that's going on at the bridge uh, the bridge church um, and then last uh, but not least we want to pray for Gil Gilbert Elementary School um, because we love Gilbert Elementary School and just because we're not meeting there uh, this Sunday or the, for the foreseeable future um, we still want to bless them. We still want to pray for them. Uh, we still believe that God wants to protect uh, the people, the family that are the families that are represented at Gilbert. Um, so we'll pray, and then we'll get on with the message. Lord, I thank you for Gilbert Elementary School. I thank you for the place that we've been able to call home, the place that you have set apart for us. But God, you didn't just give us a place, but you gave us a people to love. And we thank you for everybody that um, that that is represented on Gilbert Elementary School's campus. We pray for the administrators, uh, for the principal, God. We pray for her leadership, for, for her um, to have a clear mind, Lord, to be able to, to direct people in these times. Uh, God, I pray for the families, um, the families that uh, are in need. Lord, would you help uh, help them to see that you are with them, that you are near. And Lord, I pray for the teachers um, that as they're trying to navigate through uh, teaching remotely, God, would you help them? Would you give them wisdom? Would you give them insight? Would you give them strategies? Um, bless Gilbert Elementary School, Lord, and the families that are represented on their campus. We love you and we thank you for how faithful you are, not only to us, but to Gilbert. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And uh, without further ado, uh, we will get on to our message, which will also be posted on um, our uh, YouTube page later on, uh, The Bridge Church BP. Um, so if you uh, want to share it on there, you can share it on there on YouTube as well. Thanks. Hey, Bridge family. So excited that you joined us here this morning. Man, we get to have church online. I know some people are like, this is so weird. Man, I am so excited. A, I love technology. But B, I love this. Man, the church cannot be stopped. The coronavirus comes and says, you can't be around nobody. And church is like, we're going online. I'll see you all on the internet because you're not going to stop us. We serve an unstoppable God. Therefore, we are the unstoppable church. I mean, come on, somebody. God, God cannot be stopped. His church cannot be stopped. And so I'm excited that you guys are joining, joining us online today. So thank you, thank you so much. Hi, I hope you're all in your pajamas. I hope you have a nice cup of coffee or hot chocolate or tea or whatever you do. I hope, I hope you didn't even brush your teeth yet. You know, I hope you're just living it up. I mean, just stanky breath and all. <laughs> now maybe you should brush your teeth, but if, especially if you have a spouse, just do them all a favor. But no, I am glad that you're here and I'm excited for, um, for, for what this time really is. And I believe that God's gonna, God's gonna speak. And so would you treat this time as special? Would you treat this time as, as holy, not as like, let me just put it on the background and do some chores and clean this and do that. Now, would you guys pause? Right? That's what God created on the seventh day. He said, I'm going to make it rest, a.k.a. this. I'm going to create a pause button. You're not robots. Pause yourself. And let's just pause for the next 30 minutes, 35 minutes. And let's just hear God. Because I think he wants to speak and he wants to address some things. 
And so we're going to continue with our series called Prepare. Isn't it interesting, a month ago, God told us, hey, I want you to talk about your word for the season is to prepare. And then now we're here. We're like, whoa. Jeremiah 33, 3 says this, if you call to me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. It's as if God knew what was happening. And he says, this, let me give you a word to sustain you in this season. Prepare. Now, I don't think the word prepare was only for the coronavirus and preparing and buying toilet paper. I don't think it was only for that. But I think this whole um, pandemic and quarantine all plays a part into what God is having us to prepare for. And so, man, I am excited. When all this broke, I'm like, God's been speaking to us. Let's go. You know what I mean? Like, you ever heard God and then you were con he confirmed his word and you were like, I heard God. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, I heard God. I know his voice. I know he's speaking. And he's speaking because he has a plan. And so, man, I know it may seem chaotic, but would you at least hold on to this one truth? God is speaking to his people. My sheep hear my voice, said God. Whew, I mean, come on, somebody. I am pumped about that. But I'm excited that you're here. We're going to continue our series, Prepare. We're going to be church online for the next foreseeable future. I mean, I don't know how much, how much longer we're going to be like this. But I do know this, there are people who, whose hearts are wide open to the message about Jesus. And so would you invite someone, either now, text them now, hey, my, my uh, was it? church is online right now, come visit them. The pastor's weird, but who cares, right? Like, invite somebody to come on and, and uh, check it out, because I know the hearts are open right now. Um, but we're going to continue our series called Prepare, and I want to title today's message this. That was not in the plan. That was not, have you ever made plans, and then... These things came to interrupt the plan, and they just threw off the whole thing. And you're like, that is not in the plan. I want to continue that uh, message. Uh, the week, the, the last time I spoke, I shared a message called this. Are you scared of the dark? And it was titled that because we talked about how in Genesis, the first thing that God did after the earth was formless and void is he said, let there be light. He turned on the light. He initiated, in other words, he brought light on the inside to illuminate where they were. Or where, not where they were. Where, what, what, what the earth was. He illuminated before he created one thing, before he installed one system. He said this, let the lights be turned on. And man, in my life, there was things going on that were exposing the flaws and the shortcomings inside of me. And I was getting irritated and I was getting frustrated. And really this, to be honest, I was feeling like a failure. And it wasn't until God spoke and he said this, Sean, I'm not trying to destroy you. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to turn on the lights. And sometimes things have to be exposed. That's what happens when lights get turned on. They get Things get exposed. And so it looks like you're just being exposed, like you're falling short again, like you're not meeting up, like you're failing again. But really, it's just me turning on the lights so that way you know where you're really at. You're not lying to yourself anymore. You're not believing a false sense of, of where you are, but you know right where you are. Because the only way you can get to where you need to go is to know where you're at right now. You will never get to where you're supposed to be if you don't know where you're at right now, guarantee you. And so I believe that God is now turning on the lights and people are seeing what's on the inside. And so when that happens, sometimes things happen that are not in the plan. So today's message title, that was not in the plan. Let's pray and then we'll get started. Father, thank you so much for your word. Father, thank you so much for truth. Father, thank you so much for speaking to your people. What an honor and a privilege it is to hear your voice and to know that we are in tune with heaven. So God, today, would you speak to us? Would you meet each and every individual as they're, whether they're on their couch, whether they're in their living rooms or in their rooms, or some of them may be on the toilet or whether they're in the car, God, would you speak to them? Holy Spirit, we don't do church to be cute. We don't do church online so we're hip and cool. God, we meet and we pause our lives because we need you. Holy Spirit, we desperately need you. So meet us, fill us up to overflowing. We want to leave this time together better than when we came in, more passionate about where we're going, and this and, and this firmness on the inside that says this, I will not be moved. God, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. And that was not in the plan. When I, when I titled it, when I titled it, that was not in the plan. It made me think of this time, my wife and I, on our honeymoon. I mean, beautiful white sand. We went to a nice resort. My wife was like, we're doing it A class. Like we're going all out. And I'm like, who's paying for it? Right. And so 
was the most expensive thing I had bought in my life up until that point. I remember putting in my credit card information and thinking, uh, this might be the end of me. I was so nervous. Anyway, we go over there. And so we're on this resort in Mexico, I think Cancun, if I'm not mistaken. And there's this island right off of Cancun that you can go visit. I'm not going to say it because it has a Spanish name and you're going to make fun of me and call me a white boy. So there's an island over there. We took a ferry over, over there to the, to the island and we want to go hang out. And so we went like snorkeling, terrible idea. We went scootering. I loved it. It's one of my, it's one of my secrets is this. I want a scooter so bad. I ask Amanda at least like three to four times a year, hey babe, can I buy a scooter? And she always has the same answer. You're ridiculous, right? Anyway, so we rented a scooter. It was like a oh, dream come true. I'm married, I'm with my wife, I'm on a scooter, like yas, right? And so living it up, having a great time. Go to have dinner, in the middle of dinner, I'm, my mind starts thinking, what time is it? Checking the time. And then I start thinking, when does this last ferry leave? Hey, babe, when is the last ferry leaving? She's like, ah, oh, blah, 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 she says something. I don't know. I'm like, okay, we're talking back and forth. And then I don't know if I looked at a brochure that was in my pocket or if I just remembered. And I'm like, babe, I think the ferry leaves like soon, like real soon. And she's like, all right. So we try to find the waiter. He's taking forever. Finally find him. We pay our bill and we start walking, right? And so when I'm nervous, I, I already walk fast because I have long legs, right? But when I'm like nervous, like in a hurry, I really start walking fast. And so it's our first time as a married couple really taking a, a walk. And so, you know, like for you wives or sp spouses that walk slow, some of you are like, hey, wait up, what about me? And I'm just like, let's go, go, go. So I'm like speed walking, right? And Amanda's just like, and I'm just like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And I'm like, I think we're gonna miss it. I think we're gonna miss it. And so we turn a corner finally, we're going down all these blocks. We turn a corner where you can finally see the water and we see our ferry and it's docked. Um, on the dock or whatever it does on the water right there next to the shore. And so I'm like, oh, and I see them like moving around like they're like getting ready to take off. And so I'm like, babe, we gotta run. And so we start running and running and running. And maybe we're about like 200 yards away. And I'll never forget, I just see this big old boat just drift off. I saw my hopes just drift off. And I'm like, no. And so I run even faster, like as if I'm gonna leap, right? And just catch on the edge of it like a movie. Call me Keanu Reeves, right? And so we get to the front and the lady is taking tickets. I think Amanda talks to her because she speaks Spanish. And we're like, hey, was, when's the next ferry coming? And she's like, that's the last one. And immediately panic on the inside. On the outside, I mean, this is my, my wife, my, my, my newlywed wife, babe, we got this. I'll beat up whoever you need me to beat up. I mean, we are going to be okay. On the inside, this is going to be our last day. Like, oh my gosh, we're going to die. They're going to kidnap us. They're like, going to have ransom notes. They're going to have those letters where, like, from a newspaper all clipped out. Babe, they're going to want millions of dollars. Well, for you, they probably only want, like, you know, a couple hundred for me. But they want millions for you, right? Like, on the inside. But on the outside, oh, we got this. That's okay. And so I'm like, um, so what are our options? Do we got to rent a hotel? Like, do we got to, like, buy a tent? Like, What's going on? The lady's like, ah. she's like, well, what you could do is there's another ferry down the way. It's a little bit more expensive. You got to pay for that. But it's a speed ferry. It'll take you 15 minutes to get to your, to the other side. I was like, let's go. She's like, one problem. What's the problem? She said that ferry drops you off half an hour from your resort. And I said, all right. So then what do we do? And she's like, then you got to take a taxi and you got a taxi back to your resort. And I'm like, all right. So I either stay here and get kidnapped or I die on a speedboat, or I get kidnapped in a taxi, or he just takes me to somewhere and he murders me. Like those are my three options. Like that's, those are the plans for my, my life. This is the way my life's ending, right? I thought it would be a little bit more dramatic, but. And so we go on the other ferry, right? And the, we're on this other ferry, it's like a speed ferry. So it's like flying. I remember with Amanda acting all cool, like, hey babe, isn't this such, like these are just memories, babe, like adventures, so much fun. Aren't you having a blast? And on the inside, just trying to convince myself that we're having a good time and that we're not going to die. And so we get to the other side, finally. And Amanda's, Amanda's uh, talking to the guy, the taxi guy. And he's trying to, like, rip us off. And Amanda's like, you're not going to rip me off, homie. You don't know me. Like, out there. So we, we get there. We, everything Everything's cool. But I remember thinking this in the middle. Man, I started acting how I don't normally act because what was supposed to be the plan all of a sudden wasn't the plan. You ever been there? Your plan ever changed on you and you got upset? 
the plan ever changed on you and you got frustrated or irritated. There's something about a plan changing that does something to us on the inside. And so I want to talk about this guy named Peter. Peter in the Bible has this, has, has, has this plan that he thinks is supposed to be the plan changed on him. And he starts acting differently. It's almost as if when pressure is applied, then you'll see what's on the inside, right? If I had a tube of something and if it wasn't labeled and it wasn't see-through, if I wanted to know what was on the inside, I would squeeze it. And as I squeezed it, out would come what's on the inside. Some of us have been going through this quarantine season and life's been squeezing us putting pressure on all sides, finances, work, kids, future, everything. It's just putting pressure. And the things that are coming out, let me tell you, they are not just because of the season that we're in. It's because that's what's on the inside of us. Now, don't get the bad idea that, oh, I'm a terrible person. I'm failing. No, 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 no. It's like, it's like my, my students at work. I give a test and some of them come up and they'll say, hey, Mr. Hamilton, how do you, how do, you do number three? And I'm like, well, I can't tell you how to do number three. It's a test. I know, but just can you just tell me what to do? Because I don't know how to do it. I said, no, no, you don't understand the point of a test. The point of a test is not just an assignment to earn grades. The point of a test is so I can assess what you know and what you don't know. And then I, as a teacher, can better serve you and help the areas where, that you don't know and be able to reinforce the areas that you do know. And so a test for me is just valuable information. You see, and sometimes we go through these seasons where pressure is applied and what comes out makes us feel like a failure. No, it's not a, you're a failure or you're a champion. It's this, God, thank you for the information that I can now take and I can see what things I need to change on the inside of me, what things I need to give to you, what things I'm still holding on to, what areas I still need freedom. And so when pressure is applied, don't feel like, man, I'm a failure. Feel like this. Man, at least I know where I'm struggling at so I can get better. God, thank you for revealing what was on the inside of me so that way I can now better uh, be become a, the better version of myself, God, the true version, the way that you created me to be. And so Peter is this person. Peter, Peter lived this life where he was always like just controversial, big mouth, always had an answer. It's Peter. Like that, that's who he is. And people rag on Peter, but I like Peter. Um, I mean, he... he he walked on water. You ever walked on water? No. And Peter, Peter's cool in my book. Let's pick it up in Matthew chapter 16. I almost said Peter chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. And so Peter and the disciples, they're there. And Jesus comes in. He asks, he, he wants to find out some information from them. And this is what he says. Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say that I the son of man am. And I, I read this, I've read it many times and I read it again and I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. They don't know who you are? You didn't give them the business of the card? Hey, you wanna follow me? I'm Jesus, the son of God. Address is in heaven. You know what I mean? Like you didn't give them a business card? You didn't let them know who you were? You mean to tell me people are following you and they haven't decided who, who you are yet in their minds? It's as if Jesus has grace for people to follow before they start believing. You see, I think sometimes we as Christians, we mess this up. We try to give people Jesus. Let me just show you that he's the answer. Let me explain to you. Let me break it down. Let me show you everything. And people are like, oh, I don't want to hear all that. Like, I don't need that. I, I Sometimes people just need a relationship first. Let me just Let me just experience Jesus. And then I'll get a revelation of who he is. It's as if Jesus was fine saying, you can follow me before you actually believe in me. Man, may we be a church that says this. Man, you can you can have your journey here. Feel safe to live your life here. Wrestle out your shortcomings here. So that way, in season, you could have a revelation that Jesus really is who he says he is. You just don't have this revelation because your parents said or a friend said or a pastor told you. No, you have a revelation of who God is because you journeyed with him, because you lived life with him, and you've come to your own conclusions that he truly is the son of God, that he really is the answer, that he really is the king of kings and the Lord of lords and the name above every other single name. Sometimes that revelation only comes through relationship, not through teaching. So Jesus comes and he asks that question. Verse 14. So they, so they said, the disciples, um, some say you're John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah. I mean, it's still loud. The jury's still loud. We're still trying to wait. And so Jesus comes and he pointedly asks them, no, 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 no. Let me rephrase it for you then, guys. 
Who do you say that I am? I want to see the Jesus. Now you're getting personal. Now you really want to, well, uh, 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 you know, Jesus. Uh, and I can imagine like the hesitation. But you know, Peter, Peter, big mouth Peter steps up and Peter says, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Now check out Jesus' answer to him. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, a.k.a. a person didn't tell you that. You didn't hear that from somebody else. And this is what he says, but by my Father who is in heaven, a.k.a. this, Peter, blessed are you because you heard that from heaven. You didn't hear that from a person. You heard that from heaven. So blessed are you, Peter. Blessed are you because you heard that from on high. You didn't hear that from, the, from your peers around here. And then he says this, and I also say that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. If I'm Peter, I'm like, nailed it. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. You know what I mean? I mean, I would, I'd be pumped if I was Peter. But, but Jesus says this sentence at the end, which people confuse, and they think it means that Jesus is going to build his church on Peter. Listen, because he says, and on your name is Peter, which Peter means rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. And people feel like, okay, well, that means that God's going to build his church on Peter. No, no, no. Church is not built on one man. Church is not built on me. Church is not built on my wife. It's not built on my family. It's not built on you. It's, no, no, the church is built on one, and his name is Jesus. He is the foundation. The church is built on one. And so... Don't get confused that the church is built on Peter. No, no, no. Peter's a human being like you and I, but the church is built on Jesus. But what's interesting is that Peter's name means rock, and then later on Jesus says rock. And so what he's doing in the original language is he's playing, he's doing a little play on words. And he says, it's, it's, it's roughly translated like this. This will be a better translation for it. This would be as if Jesus said, it's like a boulder of truth came out of the mouth of this little stone that's really what he's saying when he says and and peter and uh, your name is peter and on this rock i'm going to build my church meaning this man peter and on this massive revelation that you just got peter isn't it funny that you got a massive boulder sized revelation of who i am and you're just a little rock in other words this man peter a miracle just happened a miracle just happened this big old boulder came out of that little rock Man, God is still in the business of doing miracles, of having profound things come out of small things. So I don't know if you feel little or insignificant or unimportant, but could I encourage you today? God is in the building of making boulder-sized things come out of little stones. And so be encouraged that God wants to take even what you feel is like so little and use it to have boulders come out of it. So who is Peter? Peter is a man that hears from God. He is a man that hears from God, like Peter. Fast forward a couple chapters. John chapter 18. Now we see in John chapter 18, this is a story. Uh, this is not like a fake story, a real story where Jesus is about to be betrayed be by Jesus. They just had the Last Supper. I mean, by, by Judas. They just had the Last Supper, and now they're walking, and Peter's walking with Jesus, and they're walking out, and up comes Judas with his other, I'm going to say friends, but probably not friends, other people who are going to take take um take jesus and as, as they're coming to take jesus peter steps up now peter's there you see because peter had a plan jesus asked peter to uh, for, for him, peter to follow him years a couple years back and peter started following him and in peter's mind if he knew that jesus was the, was the messiah scholars believe this that the messiah was what what the what the jewish people back then believed that he was going to liberate them from the roman empire so that way they could be their own, their own, their own uh, country again, their own people again. And so Peter's saying this, Jesus, I'm going to fight for you no matter what, because you're supposed to free us from this Roman empire. So Judas and, and those people come with him and they're about to take him. And Peter takes out his sword. I mean, I don't know if you have friends that are like this or not, maybe in past lives, if you live that kind of life. But you, you, always, you, you always need a friend like Peter. You know, someone that has a shank on them just in case. Like, I mean, I'm not going to use it, but if time calls for it, you know, I'm just kidding. Don't, don't shank people. But Peter had this sword. And Peter has a sword and he slices off this, this guy's ear. Because he's saying this, Jesus, there's a plan. You're going to liberate us from Rome. And far be it from me 
that you've died and that plan doesn't happen, so I'm going to fight for you. This is who Peter is. He is zealous for God. He hears from God. He is zealous for God. Like, I'm going to kill for you, Jesus. This is the plan. Then Jesus, check out what Jesus says. Jesus, or sorry, John chapter, chapter 18, verse 11. Peter just cuts off the guy's ear and listen to Jesus' response. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back in its sheath. I shall not, or shall I not drink from the cup of suffering the Father has given me? And then in, in, in a different part of the Gospels, we read that Jesus takes the ear and he heals it and he puts it back on. Now put yourself in Peter's shoes, right? Scriptures come alive when you can identify with the person. Peter's sitting there, standing there probably, blood on a sword. Guy's probably on the floor. There's probably an ear there. Jesus heals it. And now Peter's standing there like, Jesus, this is not part of the plan, Jesus. Peter's sitting there. Jesus, the plan is you're coming in to overthrow Rome. And now you're telling me that you're going to let them take you so that you can die. That's not part of the plan. You ever had the plan change on you? You ever, maybe for instance, you said 2020 is going to be my year. God, this is my year. I'm going to get financially ahead. God, my relationship with my spouse is going to get better. God, my relationship with my kids, my kids are going to get on track. We're going to have we're at financial goals. God, you're going to do something. God, I'm believing you. God, we're going to start that business. God, we're going to move ahead and do this. I'm going to take that job that I feel like you're telling me to take. I'm going to step out. And as you stepped out in 2020, all of a sudden the coronavirus hits and now we're on quarantine and now jobs that looked like they were certain, businesses like looked that they were set up for success are now looking like it's, a, it's just about to be a disaster. And you're saying, hey God, it's not part of the plan. God, I signed up on January 1st, 2020 for a different plan than the plan that I'm living out right now. God, no, 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 I, I didn't sign up to be frustrated at home. I didn't sign up to get so irritated. God, I didn't sign up to be fighting with my spouse. God, I didn't sign up for my kids to be here and, and to be doing whatever they, I'm trying to work and I'm trying to teach them and I'm trying to cook and I'm trying to keep us all healthy. And God, I, I, I didn't sign up for this. God, this is, this, is not, this is not part of the plan. And so I, I kind of wonder with Peter, he's standing there and the last three, lot, the three, three years of his life, he gave up being a fisherman to follow Jesus. And now Jesus is going, or he's, he's doing a plan that Peter said, that's not the plan. Because sometimes we say God's plan, but what we're really saying is it's our plan, but I want to sound holy, so I'll say God's plan, but it's really my plan. And so don't get too technical. No, no, no. There's, there's, sometimes there's God's plan and sometimes there's our plan. And we would love for them to be the same. Many times they're not. And so Peter's is like, this is, I'm imagining him. This is not the plan. And so I wonder because only verses, moments later, Peter's walking and Jesus tells him, Jesus tells him, hey, you're, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna deny me three times. Peter begins to walk and three people, hey, don't you know Jesus? Nah, Jesus who? I don't know how to spell Jesus. Jesus, what? I don't even know what Jesus, right? Like, like, I don't even know. So much so that the third time, this young girl asked him, hey, weren't you? Like someone where he, who he didn't need to be scared of, a, a young little girl. He didn't need to be scared of her. He says this, no, I don't know who you're talking about. And he leaves and he walks away. Actually, he curses her and then walks away. How did that Peter show up after a Peter over here just cut off a guy's ear? What transpired where there was a man willing to cut off an ear to now he's denying him at all costs? It's as if, and I just kind of wonder if it's because the plan changed. Did the plan change? And when the plan changed, out came a different person than who was originally there. Maybe you felt like that was 2020. 2020 came out and you're like, man, it's going to be my year. I'm doing this thing. Now you're over here hoarding toilet paper in 2000, 2020 in March. You're buying toilet paper by the thousands when the, you would have never thought that's what 2020 would have looked like. And has the plan changed? And when the plan changed, are you now like Peter acting completely different? Man, did the plan change in such a way where now instead of being, man, this is what I'm going after. This is what God has for me. You're like, man, I'm irritated. Man, I'm frustrated. Man, I feel like a failure. I'm messing up with my kids. Man, job. I can't be the husband I'm supposed to be. I can't be the mom I'm supposed to be. I can't be the friend I'm supposed to be. The son, the daughter I'm supposed to be. God, what is going on? I don't even know how to act right now. You ever felt that way? Has the plan that you felt like was supposed to be the plan all of a sudden turned into not part of it? being not part of the plan. I wonder if that's 
what Peter's going through at the same time. I wonder if that's what we're going through. God, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't sign up to be a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad, a stay-at-home uncle, a stay-at-home aunt. God, that's not, that's not at all what I signed up for. God, this is, this is not, this is not what it's supposed to be like. And so, but I wonder if sometimes the plan that we see, this is the plan, God, we only see in part. But God is saying this, there is a bigger plan that you don't know about. You see, because Peter, in his mind, the plan was, Jesus, you're going to liberate us from the Roman Empire. You are going to overthrow Rome, and we're going to be free. And Jesus is like, no, 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 your plan's too small. Your plan's too small. You think I'm here just for the Jewish people. No, the plan's too small. I'm here to save the whole entire world. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them kill me. I'm going to die on a cross so that I can pay for the sins. And I'm doing that so that I can save the whole world. His plan was bigger. It looked different. And Peter might have felt like this is not part of the plan. But it wasn't part of his plan. But it was a part of the Sometimes God's big plan destroys your little plan. Sometimes our minds can't comprehend how big his plan is. Sometimes our eyes can't see how big his plan is. It reminds me of, of Joseph in the Old Testament. Remember Joseph? His brothers hated him. They sell him into slavery. Yeah, he goes into slavery. He gets accused of rape. He goes to prison. He meets the king. He interprets the king's dream. And now he's number two in charge of Egypt. There was seven years of plenty. He saved a bunch of food. There's seven years of drought. So now he's able to give out food as the only country that saved up, only country that prepared during that time. And now he's able to dish out food. And his brothers, who sold him into slavery years ago, I think the year, I want to say it was 20-something years before, his brothers come. And now Joseph sees his brothers. And if this is me as a brother to another brother who was hating on me, if I would have seen them, I would have said, told you. I told you, you guys didn't, mm, you didn't listen, but now you, but that's not what Joseph does. Joseph says this profound statement when he sees his brother, he looks at his brother in the face because they're like, I'm so sorry. And Joseph says this, what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. Say what? That, that's what you're going to say, Joseph? You're not going to say, I told you so in your face. You're going to say, you meant something for evil, but my God meant it. My God meant it for good. It's as if Joseph had enough patience in and of himself to say, this might not be might not be part of the plan. It might not look part of the plan, but I'm going to have a reassurance on the inside that as long as I can stay close to God, I don't have to go after a plan. The plan's going to go after me. If I can stay close to who my God is, because you'll read several times in the story of Joseph, it says, and the Lord was with him and the Lord was with him. Joseph wasn't following a plan. He was following the Lord. And if you can follow the Lord, the plans and the dreams have to follow you. And so Joseph is sticking close, sticking close. So much so that at the end, he's able to say, I see what happened here. There was a plan. And if I would have limited it to my plan, I would have quit. I would have been disgruntled. I would have been angry. I would have been frustrated a long time ago. But because I didn't. Because I held on, because I because I stayed close to God, I can now at the end say, ah, you meant some things for evil, but my God meant it for good. Hey, may the plans that look like they've changed in 2020, may you have a reassurance that they have not changed from God's plan. God is still in charge. He is still on the throne. And maybe you're saying 2020 is the year where my marriage is getting back to what it's supposed to be. And this quarantine has been terrible for your marriage. Man, may, I, may you start declaring this out of your mouth this week. Man, enemy, you may have meant this for evil in my marriage. Come on, but I serve a God who meant it for good. Maybe with your kids, your kids are running wild. They were running wild before. They're running wild now. They're driving you crazy and you're saying things like this. Man, I can't, I can't wait for you guys. To, and now you're getting angry and your relationship's getting strained. May your words change and may you start saying things like this. Enemy, you meant it for evil. But God, you're going to turn this around for good. Maybe in your finances, you're like, this is the year we finally get ahead. This is the year we can finally buy that house. This is the year where we don't, we don't, we're not in lack any longer. And then this thing hits and now you're out of work and you're saying, enemy, I know you meant this for evil, but I'm going to start changing my words because my God's going to turn around and use it for good. Sean, how is he going to do that? Can I tell, I don't know. 
I'm gonna let God do the godding, and I'll do the the, the, the living of the person. I, I know godding is not a word, it's not a verb, but I'm gonna let God do God, and I'm gonna do me, and I'm gonna let God do what He does best. What does He do best? He takes things that were meant for evil and uses them for good. He takes things that, that that was meant for destruction, and He turns it around and He uses it to build life. He's the one that says, I work together all things for good to those who love me and are called according to my purpose. And so that's who my, in the smack dab middle, that's who he is. Now, you might say those things, but on the inside, you still might be feeling this guilt and shame. So check out what happens. Peter, Jesus dies, he resurrects, he meets Peter and the disciples. They're having fish for breakfast, disgusting. Peter's there. And the Bible says that John sees Jesus and he says this. He says, hey, Jesus is here. And Peter, the Bible says in verse 7 on John chapter 21, he puts his tunic on. He puts his coat on first, symbolizing this. I'm a little bit ashamed that I denied Jesus three times. Have you felt that way this past week, week and a half? Have you felt ashamed about the way you've been acting? about the outbursts of anger, about the frustration, about, about the thoughts that you've been thinking, about how you so quickly feel like you've lost faith in God or your, or your faith has wavered. Are you, are, you, are you ashamed? Are you embarrassed about that? Man, Jesus came to Peter. Peter wasn't coming to Jesus. Jesus was the one that was coming after Peter. He, Peter comes in, they bring fish, they eat breakfast, and then Jesus starts asking questions. He says, hey, Peter, Peter doesn't initiate a conversation. Jesus initiates a conversation. Peter has shame. We'll see right now, Peter has guilt. I don't know if you felt that way in this past couple weeks. By the way, you've been acting because the plans have changed or the thoughts that you've been thinking. But man, may you use this season that was meant for evil. May you see that God is going to turn around and make it be used for good. Jesus comes in and he asks Peter this. He says, hey, Peter, you still love me? Peter says, you know that I love you. And this happens a couple times, you see, but we lose the, in the original language, we lose the words because we don't have enough words to, to describe what they're saying. This is, if you want a better translation, this is what they're saying. Jesus asks Peter, Peter, do you love me unconditionally? Do you love me no matter what? That, that word there, it means that agape, that no matter what kind of love. When, when Peter responds, he doesn't use the word agape, he says this, yes, I, I, I do love you. I, 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 I do, aka this, I do care about you. Jesus, you know that I care about you. And then Jesus asks the second time, okay, do you, do you agape me? Do you, do you love me no matter what? And Peter responds, Jesus, you know that I really care about you. Jesus, you know that I really care about you. I want to pick it up here, the last one. And then finally in verse um, 17, Jesus asks in uh, John chapter 21, verse 17, and Jesus asks him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, all of a sudden he gets his name, Simon, son, son of Jonah. The same name that Peter said, or he said about Peter a while ago when he said, I'm on this rock, I'm going to build my church. He said, and you are Peter, but he first said this, and Simon bar Jonah, and you are Peter. And so he gives that same name as if bringing symbolism to that moment. And he says this, Simon of Jonah, Simon, son of Jonah, do you agape? Do you love me no matter what? And for the third time, check out the words here. Verse 17, and Peter was grieved. He was sad. Not just like, man, no, like, like grieved. Like he just lost somebody. Like he felt like he lost his relationship with God. He was grieved. Has this past couple weeks made, made you feel grieved about the things that you've done? about the way that you're feeling, about how anxiety has been taking over or fear has been taking over or man, just pressure has been taking over or this or this, um, or this, uh, thought of, man, I can't spend another moment with my kids, I can't spend another moment with my spouse. God, this is not part of the plan. God, this is not part of the plan. You've been grieved about the way you're acting. Uh, Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, do you love me no matter what? And then check out Peter's response. Lord, you know all things. Lord, you know what I did. Lord, you know how I've acted. Lord, you know what I said. Lord, you know how I had those outbursts. Lord, you know how I've been frustrated. Lord, you know the things that I told my spouse. Lord, you know the way I feel like I shouldn't give up. Lord, you know that I've let fear take over me. Lord, you know that I've, that I've 
said man, if, if there really is a God, and where is he? Lord, you know. Peter says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I care for you a lot. Saying, Lord, you know that I don't agape you the way, I don't love you the way that you love me. Check out Jesus' response. This, one of the stories, one of my favorite, favorite about Jesus. Because Jesus met him. Jesus initiated the conversation. And Peter, through this conversation, says, I cannot meet your where, where, where are you where I feel you need me to be I, I don't love you the same way that you love me and Peter I mean Jesus responds to Peter I love it check out what he says three simple words feed my sheep you're like Sean who cares what does animals have to do in the middle of this no 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 because you don't understand what Jesus was saying is this the same call that's on your life is still on your life now uh, you haven't slipped down the pole. You're not, go ahead, go, 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 go back to the beginning, go back to start. That's not what's happening here. Jesus comes in, he says this, Peter, you may feel like you don't love me the same way that I love you. Peter, you may feel like a failure. You may feel like you have grief and you have shame and you're embarrassed, but I need you to know this. You're still called. So moms, dads, brothers and sisters, and kids and friends, who feel like you've been failing. The plans have changed and you haven't reacted and responded the way that you should. May you hear the voice of God today. Whew. May you hear the voice of God today. You are still called. The plan of God has not expired. The plan of God is not, is not, is not time is not out on it. You haven't done too much to disqualify yourself. The situation of, 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 of where we find our country and our globe in right now does not, sup does not supersede God's plan on your life. In fact, God's plan supersede those things. And so I need you to stand firm right now and know this. The call of God is still on you. The things that he's spoken, still true. The thoughts that he thinks towards you, still accurate about you. And so, man, may you be encouraged today, no matter what life is telling you to feel like. Sometimes you just have to tell life how it's going to be life. The enemy meant this for evil, but God's going to turn it around for good. Life, I feel like I failed today. But you know what? I'm going to get myself back up and I'm going to remind myself that Jesus still tells me to feed my sheep, a.k.a. this. You got it in you. If I've called you, I called you because I've equipped you already on the inside to do what I call you to do. If I've called you to it, it's because I created you for it. And so don't let the enemy partner with those evil thoughts on there. No, no, no. There's some good thoughts that you think about yourself. And there's some bad thoughts that you think about yourself. And the enemy wants to partner with the bad thoughts. May he not partner any longer. May you take that power away from him. What the enemy meant for evil. In the season that was meant to destroy you, would you come out on top? In the season that was meant to destroy your marriage, may it come out on top. In the season that meant to destroy your job, may you come out on top. In the season that meant to destroy your finances, may you come out on top. Because we serve the king of all kings. Come on, we serve the Lord of all lords. He is still on the throne. He hasn't gone away. He isn't, he isn't spending, he isn't standing six feet away from us. He doesn't have to do social distancing. He wants to be right there in the middle of your situation. In fact, he wants to be so close, he wants to be on the, up, up on the inside of you. He's not looking to be six feet away. He's not in quarantine in heaven, not doing nothing. No, he wants to act now on your behalf. So would you not let the enemy shame you from hiding from him any longer? May that be broken off you. May you remind yourself, mm -mm, be my sheep. I hear you, Jesus. I'm still called. And so, man, I, I want to pray. And after we pray, I want to have a time where we can have, uh, what is it? communion together we can break bread and we can have 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 juice so if you don't have that ready quickly scramble get some get some uh, get some juice get some bread and we're gonna take communion but i'm gonna pray and as i pray uh man would would you pray and if you need to repent man may this be a time of repent not shame or guilt but just saying god man i did not handle that well and may you release the hold that the enemy has on you say enemy you gotta let go I don't believe those things any longer. So I'm gonna pray and then we'll and then we'll continue. Father, I thank you so much that you still are on the throne. I thank you that you're still speaking. So God, whatever things were meant for evil, God, would you turn around and would you mean them for good in our lives? So God, people that have felt 
this shame and this guilt and this embarrassment of the things that have happened. May they rest in reassurance that you are the God that restores. You are the God that meets. You are the God that initiates. And you are the God that restores. And so God, would you restore them? The moms in here who feel disqualified. God, would you restore them? And would you remind them they were created for this? You have to tap into the heavenly connection that they have because they were created for this. The dads that feel like failures right now. God, would you remind them that they were created for this and that you are with them. God, for the, the kids who feel like they are just screwing everything up, God, would you remind them they were created for this. God, the people that feel like there's so much fear and anxiety and it's hard for them to breathe sometimes, it's hard for them to sleep, they stay up at night. God, and they're just constantly worried. God, would they remind themselves that you are still in charge, God. That you are the God that can work together all things for good. And so, God, right now, the anxieties that we feel, the, 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 the cares that we have right now, God, we release them to you. God, because the Bible says that you care about us. So would you meet every need? Father, people in, who are in lack today, God, would you meet them right now in Jesus' name? God, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, go ahead and uh, take a few moments. Make sure you have your bread and your juice. I'm going to get mine uh, together real quick. I'm going to call over my wife, and we're going to take communion together with you guys. So excited we get to do communion together as a family. And so uh, if you have your bread, go ahead and take your bread. Again, if you don't have bread, use a cracker, use a noodle, use something to represent just some kind of carb. A chip. A chip, <laughs> but not a hot Cheeto because that's the devil. I'm just kidding. <laughs> use something. Uh but in the Last Supper, in the Passover, uh, Jesus took, took the bread and the Bible said that he broke it. And uh, when he broke it, it was it's symbolizing his body being broken mm -hmm. for us. And we know that when his body was broken, sins were paid for. We know that we were able to have peace. We know that we were able to have healing. Mm -hmm. um, and so the brokenness of his body, what it really means is this, is that he was broken so we could be whole. And so during this time, uh, that feels like stress and anxiety and fear and frustration and all, all these feelings mixing around. May we take a moment and remind ourselves, God, in the large scheme of things, God, you were broken so I could be whole. So I don't need to deal with all these things that I'm dealing with. I just have to remember that you were broken. And I need to take say that, God, you were broken so that way I could be whole. So would you take your bread, um, break it, and would you go ahead and eat eat of your bread? Chewy. <laughs> and in the same manner, um, Jesus instructed us to take the cup of his blood. Uh, we're drinking purple Powerade here. Powerade. <laughs> um, whatever you're drinking, if it's water, if it's juice, whatever, soda, um, it doesn't change the fact that it represents the blood of Jesus mm. and the blood of Jesus is what wipes us, what cleans us, what washes us mm. white as snow. The blood of Jesus is what allows us to stand before God, holy, mm. blameless, um, like we've never made a mistake in our life. Um, so I want to thank the Lord for the blood of Jesus. Um, and so I'm going to pray and uh, thank him and then we'll take the, the blood together, the Powerade or whatever you're drinking, we'll take it together. Lord, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us white as snow, that allows us to stand holy, righteous, and blameless before you. Lord, I thank you for the blood. I pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Let's Amen. Take, take the blood together. Man, guys, what an amazing service today. Thank you guys so much for joining us online. Thank you for giving God this hour to say, God, I'm, I'm just all yours. Um, I know it's crazy. I know things are feel like they might be out of control. But if you can kind of be like Joseph and just pause for a moment and say, God, 
the enemy's meaning this for evil, but God, I know that you're going to mean it. You're going to get a meaning for good. Yeah. And so would you just that, declare that this week? Would your language and your words change this week? Mm -hmm. No longer be frustration and disappointment and anger, but may instead come in out love and grace and God got this and he works together all things for good. And he's in a, what, what was meant for evil. He's going to make it mean, mean something for good. You start changing your words um, and get a bigger perspective mm -hmm. about who our God is. But Amanda and I love you guys so, so much. Our leadership teams love you guys so, so much. We wish that we could be there in person yeah. today. Wish that we could squeeze you and uh, give you a big old bridge hug and all that stuff. But uh, we can't yet, but mm -hmm. it will make that moment even more sweet, yeah. even more sweet when we do. So we love you guys. Love uh, you. Yeah, we do have some things into I wanted to real quick. We have this new thing. Uh, it's called it. It's called uh, the bridge at night. The bridge at night and so if you remember when i was a young kid some of you may be the same age as me younger or older but when I, I remember being a young kid and they had this show called nick at night and so they would show like like older shows yeah. and they would just do oh, it was just cool i liked it so we're gonna start bridge at night and go sean what's bridge at night bridge, the bridge at, at night the bridge at night the bridge <laughs> at night is it, it's this is we're gonna have um, guest speakers we're gonna go on zoom calls and we're gonna have guest speakers that are gonna talk on on different topics and so i've asked a friend that's a family and marriage therapist to come out and just hey can you come on zoom and can you just talk about how to deal with stress mm -hmm. and anxiety and how to like process um do different things that we should be doing in our family and things that we should be aware of and conversations that we should be mm -hmm. having and how to have these healthy conversations with my kids and so um this guy is a, he's a guest speaker but he's really been a friend of ours yeah. uh, he's seen us through this past two years of our lives and he is beyond incredible yeah. i've also asked a uh personal trainer to come out and talk about, hey, how do I not um, get super fat while I'm doing nothing but eating at home? <laughs> um, so just like how to exercise and how to diet. And so, and then we have a couple other guest speakers that are coming on and talk about, hey, how do I help my kids with school yeah. and education? What resources do I have that I don't know about? And so um, we're gonna have multiple guest speakers. So each week we're gonna have a one of our bridge at night, kind of like a talk show on Zoom. So. You can sign up. I'll send you the link. We'll send you the link so you can sign up for that. Yeah. But I'm really excited to be able to serve our church and give them resources yeah. um, that you might not have at your house. I don't know if you have a marriage and family therapist at your house or a trainer <laughs> at your house, but you will be because they'll be on a Zoom call. Um, but man, we love you guys. We're trying to stay connected as much as we can. Yeah. Uh, we think about you guys often. We're praying for you guys often, um, but we love, love, love you. And we will see you guys soon. See Bye. you soon. Love you. Bye. Yeah.